In this podcast, we talk about the best camera modes for shooting landscapes. And as always, Paul and Adam are wrong, and I'm right. Grab a brew or buckle up if you're commuting and get those nasty thumbs downs at the ready. Welcome to episode 18 of the podcast. Yeah, hello. I'll just Welcome to the are podcast. We all right? <laughs> this multicam setup gets complicated, doesn't it? It's, it does, yeah. Which one am I looking at now? Yeah. I get to look at two. It's great being head of the table. Yeah. Brilliant. You're always head of the table. We were talking about it's, we might look at a little bit of sponsorship further down the line for the podcast. And then any money that comes into that, invest back into having someone help us. That's because we've had some comments, haven't we, that have said, oh, you're overexposed, you're underexposed. Well, the problem is, is we can set everything up, but the light changes in, in the environments we're yeah. in and it'll get dark, it'll get light and things. So if we want to make things a little bit more professional with regards to the video editing and timescales, that's possibly why we'd get sponsorship to fund that and make yeah. things look a little bit more professional. Or too. we could open it up to our audience and invite someone to come and do that for us yeah. if you wanted to yeah. oh that's a good idea <laughs> absolutely yeah. uh, so if yeah. you would like to come and edit the photo notes for us and film it and well, it's like the um, we mentioned guests haven't we and uh, possibly getting some guests on in the future uh, but they're not going to be uh, uh, we want them to be interesting don't we and diverse <clears throat> yeah and not it'd probably not be an interview either just be someone who comes in Joins in, joins in the chat. In the the, uh, we don't want to make it an interview channel per se, do we? Somebody comes so. in, we get an extra microphone, and they join in the chat. As far as I can see, almost every other photography podcast is doing just interviews, isn't it? It's, mm. uh, I think that's why we decided early on that we didn't really want that, didn't we? I think I think we just wanted to go our own way, didn't we? I think I think if we tried to make it a a, a rigid um, format it would be really boring for us very quickly what I've it? kind of discovered as well working with the two of you for a, a while now is that if we try to do something we'll generally not get it quite right no <laughs> <laughs> yeah whatever we try to do something completely different happens yeah sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah well we're 16 17 episodes in and we still not got the audio <laughs> right <laughs> Well, the, the, the beauty of it is, is, is when we had a single camera set up, people said to us, it'd be great if you had multicam. We set up multicam and people say, who do you think you are? You smart <laughs> arses. <laughs> Trying to be like a, a movie. <laughs> like, you can't win. I know. <laughs> I think Gary's editing this one. So oh, no, see no, what, exactly. See Gary's it's editing. All me. Are awesome. Just all me. So you'll just hear my voice. <laughs> then he's silence, silence. It's my yeah, voice this, this microphone's not on. <laughs> <laughs> Neither is Paul's. <laughs> All uh, oh, right. So, what we're going to talk about this week, then, guys? Oh, I'm going to say I thought we mentioned that we were going to get an, another person in when one of the three of us couldn't make the podcast. Yeah, you two were so popular when uh, I wasn't there that I'm really scared that if I if I go away, uh, I'll never be allowed back. <laughs> I mean, from my point of view, you two are just irreplaceable. So. I get that. I, 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 it'd be like, it'd be, the shoes are too big to fill. I like, get li- that. Probably literally in your case. Yeah. <laughs> it's at least size 12, isn't it? Size, size 13, thank Third you. Size 13 really? feet. Yeah, yeah. size 13, yeah, yeah. Big feet. Yeah, yeah. Big heart. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> big feet, I, yes. <laughs> I, I, I think the beauty of it is, is when you've got three people, you bounce off each other well, don't you? Are you here for the next podcast sit? Uh, the next podcast sit, I think... Uh, um, uh, didn't we say we've got it was going to be? It was I'm getting excited be, now. Do you know where I'm going with yeah. this, Adam? I'm getting excited now. Oh yeah. Well, that's up to you guys. I said I can't make the next one because I'm going on holiday, but yeah. we might have enough in the bag to do before we come back. But if you two guys want to do it on your own, I'm sure the listeners and the viewers will be much appreciative. Are we? <laughs> we're talking camera modes today. That's the yeah. title, isn't it? Uh, that's camera right. modes. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. Camera modes. Oh. I don't know how people feel about the 15 minutes at the start of every episode where we don't talk about what the but title do, is. Do you know what's awesome? It shows that we're not obsessed by YouTube and bounce rates, yeah, isn't it? You, because most own, people have switched off. Yeah, because on my own channel, if I've titled it something, I'll every single time I will start like, hello and welcome to... I know. <laughs> Today I know. we are talking about... Blah, blah, yes, blah, blah. that's it. Because you want to keep that bounce rate yeah. low. The five Whereas, greatest things that keep you watching a YouTube video. The seven and a half best tips, uh, <laughs> photography-wise, yeah. 6.8. 6.9. <laughs> Anything you, but seven. You could try and be smart and do like do pi, like the 3.14. Yeah. I wonder how uh, YouTube I know, I know algorithm... Pi, I know pi to three. Yeah. Two decimal places, yeah. Yeah. 
Some people know it to like three point one four seven eight nine six two three eight four eight nine seven four three two. Normal service will be resumed if you're listening to the podcast world. Uh, and after, just wait till I start talking. Just hang fire. After three point one four, it was all rubbish. Though. I'm not. I'm, to be fair, I'm fascinated by how some of these numbers affect art. Mm. So like that pi, the Fibonacci sequence. Yes, it's, it's, it is absolutely fascinating, really, especially when you look at photography and how it works to the human eye and how it works for composition. So yeah. you, made, you mentioned Fibonacci. And, uh, and I stress how... again, normal service will be but resumed. This is, so, this, is, this is photography related, is it? isn't it? Of course it is, Fibonacci So you're is. saying what? So if you were to subscribe to the Raw Room and see my Landscape Photography Masterclass, okay. Uh, I talk Which about. Which is awesome, by the way. I talk about the. Do you subscribe? Uh, I have, or has he given you a username and password? He, 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 he has he's, a, he has he's, a, he's <laughs> given you a username and password, and he hasn't given me a username and password. Like, for some other reason, out of the blue, I found out that you two now are going off and doing vlogs by yourself. <laughs> yeah. And he's probably interviewed you for the Raw Room as well, and not even mentioned me. The um, mm. um, um, the Raw Room is. It's an, because I'm Paul was so kind to do it for no money. That's right. it. Whereas I'm going to have to pay the, you, aren't I? Yeah, you're a <laughs> professional i'm not <laughs> but the raw room is awesome and, uh, that's if all i was, I'm going if to, I was say. to log in can you give me an admin user I'll and give password? You a login, mate, yeah. is it admin and what's the password <laughs> yeah password <laughs> <laughs> capital p everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna be typing now aren't they admin password that's it and it'll go all around internet land to get into Gary, uh, adam's uh, thing for free for admin anyway I, I do, there is a bit about the Fibonacci sequence and how that leads on to the, the golden spiral. Wow, and stuff and how I'm you, intrigued. How you can use that. I mean, you've to... got a t shirt with it on. Yeah. You have. Yeah. I never did. mentioned that. It was just a subtle hint for the nerds of us. That yes. Are there, but... Yeah. Yeah. It is, but um, I, like I find it fascinating. That in, but it, 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 it goes uh, through all aspects of nature. So the way a, a seashell is constructed. <clears throat> Mm. Uh, uh, and flowers some, some are constructors, flowers, yeah. and uh, and everything is all to do with mathematics. And I think I think it's absolutely awesome it is and amazing. Fascinating stuff. But I'm not going to go any further than that because after that, I really don't know how it works. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, you go. What did you say then? Camera modes. Camera modes. Yeah. Six minutes in, yeah. and we've not talked about anything. Is it? Yet. Talking of which, one thing I never do, I never, unless I'm doing street photography, this is so true. I'll go out and vlog in my normal way, and then whatever happens on the day, that becomes the title of my vlog. Yeah, yeah. I never say, let's go out and talk about, you know, I'll give you tips, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do the other, and then maybe I should do. So that way, it would help me structure my videos a bit more. But I kind of like doing what I do. It's funny, yeah. Yeah, be, so, you, so we can be really credible on our own channels. And be YouTube whores on this podcast, can't we? That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I was, <laughs> was going to say camera mode. Oh, no. Shooting modes. Yeah. Are we talking about that? Yeah, we should do so want to digress mode. again before we get into it? Well, the, 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 the answer to that is easy. Any shooting mode you're comfortable with, including fully automatic, works for me. Just to stress, I don't want to sound boring, but just to stress what you said, it really is more about the storytelling than anything. Yeah. However, if you want to take control or learn to be a better landscape photographer, then there's only one mode, and that is manual. If you want to take full why, why, control, why do you think? Why do you think that then? Well, because panoramas, for instance, you know, um, you can't take panoramas in any other mode. Yes, you can, and yes, you can get lucky, and yes, you can get away with it. But there's no. If you're going to take a sequence of seven or eight or nine shots. Then the most important thing is for consistency with lighting throughout your image, consistency with focusing, mm. um, a composition without stating the obvious. You know what we're talking about: you hand holding and so on and so forth. If you're if you're good at your job and you know the settings inside and out, yes, you can get away with any of those settings. But the thing is, manual is so easy to learn, especially in landscape photography. Especially Where in you've landscape got the time. photography. Oh God! You've got the time to do it comfortably on the back of your camera. And it, and it works and I have a slight issue with it when people say it's the same if you put it in aperture priority mode and use exposure compensation is that you're essentially using you're doing manual anyway and that's not strictly true is it because you still use the camera meet you are still relying on the camera meter to set things even if you are just rolling it you still you're still using that meter to set that's the correct. settings on the camera and, it, and although you are the the the, the output of that is still the same because you are adjusting that exposure compensation. Why not just do it in manual to start with? It's just 
it's more confusing doing it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But worse still, it's almost like you're, you're forever having to take a test shot, then look at the image that you've taken, then decide if the camera has has taken the shot how you've seen it, mm. and then start dialing in under or over exposure. And then you've got to look at the scene. When you pan from right to left, well, it's slightly brighter on the left-hand side than it is on the right-hand side. So now do you have to start dialing in under exposure as you start sweeping to the left? I don't get it. I don't get it when you're talking about pano shots and stuff like that. That's why I prefer shooting manual. I don't have to think about anything else other than the exposure I'm taking. The because it's easier, it's bum, isn't bum, it? Bum. Of course it is. It's, it's easier. easier. And I ain't got a problem whether people shooting aperture priority road, smiority mode, whatever. I'm not bothered. It's way, uh, all manual mode. I prefer to shoot in manual mode. And that's, that's why is it but when i hear comments like uh, people who shoot in manual are up themselves well why i mean just because you like shooting Nonsense. in a certain mode so you know shooting aperture prior to yeah. mode for your life but, but if, you, if you were to do a panorama in a fairly big scene and it's sunny and there's some cloud maybe yeah and then you do you sweep that panorama around around in aperture priority mode on single point focus mm. yeah or single point metering yeah, yeah essentially yeah, metering, yeah. That's going to create different exposures yeah. right across that scene. Even if you're using exposure compensation, yeah. Yeah. the much better way to do it is to do it in manual. So you've got that exposure set. There will be some darker areas of the image and some brighter, just like reality. Yeah. And then you can you can change it in post, just normally, as you would a normal image across... The dynamic across range will be so range, great yeah. that you're not, you're not going to be able to capture and, and what, it. Also, in, in Lightroom now, you can take bracketed images... So you can do your pano as normal, sweeping around. If you've got it on a tripod, do bracketed images. So you do three bracketed images, move, do three, move, do three, move, do three, move, do three. Then put that all into Lightroom yeah. and it will do it all for you. And combine. It will combine the bracketed shots and it will combine the panorama shots into that one image for you. It makes it dead I, easy. I, I did it I did it last week. So on this week's vlog, I did a 15-shot HDR pano. Yeah. And it takes seconds. Yeah. It's, it's great, seconds. It? But there's absolutely no way that you could shoot that in any other mode but manual. Not, you can. Not, not easily. You yeah. can, but it, it's so much of a fast. You're making it it's more difficult. How, you're making it more it's, difficult it's, for yourself. It's how far you let the camera take over. For example, if you're in aperture priority mode, then uh, uh, people will say shoot it on the hoof and this, that and the other. Then what have you got to do? Set your uh, uh, ISO into auto mode. So you're going to get uh, uh, that other side of the yeah. triangle working properly. I'm I'm constantly just messing around until I get the exposure right in camera with my manual settings. Well, I mean, one of the arguments I, I've heard for shooting in aperture priority. Now, I don't have any. If you shoot in aperture priority and it works for you, fine, keep doing it. Yeah. And, it yeah. and it's it is definitely a great way to start to learn, especially if you're not doing landscape photography. If you're doing portraits, if you kids, aperture priority is great to be in until yeah. you become. I think we're we're, we're talking. It, some people will shoot in that forever mm. as professional photographers. Totally cool with that. Personally, I don't, but. That's another. That's another matter. But one of the opinions I've heard around shooting in aperture priority mode is that cameras are so advanced now that you should let let it do its thing. Mm. And I don't particularly agree with that because I want to do my thing. Yeah. I still think I, as the photographer, know better than that camera. Mm. Whilst you might see, you take a picture with this now of a, a scene with really high dynamic range. It's using some sort of crazy algorithms to take a really well exposed shot across the frame but your dslr or mirrorless camera still isn't doing that no um so i still want to I, personally for me i want to be in full control over what my camera is doing mm. you can only do that in manual mode. so let's let's give you a scenario then so we turn up we're going to shoot because we can all comfortably shoot in aperture priority because it's so simple it's point and shoot so we're going to shoot a scene generally f8 generally f11 for your landscape shots We've put the camera to our eye. We've depressed the fire button halfway down. What about our ISO? What, what would you do with your ISO? That's what I've just said. But yeah, but what, what would you do? Would you leave that in automatic? Or yeah, would you that's set what that I'd, ISO? I'd probably yeah. put it in a hundred. I'd probably put it to set it to a hundred if you're in, doing landscape photography. The things. comment I was on was this, this that one of the comments was it's great if you go out and shoot handheld, right? Yeah. So you're all right on ISO one hundred if it, uh, uh, in aperture priority mode. But if the lighting conditions aren't right, it's going to set your shutter speed um, uh, to a point where you're going to get a blurred image, aren't you? That is, I mean, that's not a bad point. Is that if you if you're doing handheld landscape photography, probably it, it might be 
slightly easier. It would, priority. but you're going to have to, that's what I said, but you're going to have to put it on auto ISO, aren't you? Because if you're in dark lighting conditions, it's going to take the yeah, but, shutter speed to such a point. Yeah, sorry. Oh, or am I wrong? No, you're right. No, but I want to go back to what I was saying. So you're going to leave it on auto ISO? You're going to have to. But what, but Otherwise, what? you're going to have a, 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 it going below, below 1 one twenty fifth of a second yeah. and becoming blurry yeah. or soft. But go back to what I was saying then. So instantly now we're going to shoot an aperture priority, but now we've made a conscious decision to set our ISO to 100. Mm. Well, out of the three settings... Two of them have been taken. We've already now set two of them. Mm. Yeah. And so why leave it to chance? Because at the moment, unless you really know what you're doing, when you depress your fire button halfway down with your aperture set at F11, your ISO set to 100, now you have to be conscious of what your shutter speed actually I mean, that, is. That, actually, now thinking about it, it's actually a problem doing it in AV for uh, aperture priority for handheld because... That's what I'm saying. Like you say, the, the, it, the camera will naturally bring the shutter speed down, like you say, below... Unless it's an auto ISO. So Yeah, and you, you, and you to do handheld, you want one... 125th of a second or yeah. quicker, don't yeah. you really, yeah. to handhold it safely? Yeah. Absolutely, unless you've got um, um, image stabilisation on the lens. I mean, it's, it's, no. that, that was one of the big things that when I started doing manual, man, I shoot manual for everything pretty mm. much. Uh, and it was one of the big things that I, one of the big reasons I started doing it for portraits particularly is because you can set that shutter speed for one, I don't know, I usually go for like between one 100th and one 200th of a second. And the, you don't, as, particularly when I was using primes, you don't then need to worry about your camera not having image stabilization. Mm. Image stabilization on a lens becomes completely irrelevant. It does, when you're but, shooting stills, but to, to the argument that we've had in the past is about the dinosaur thing. Maybe it is because the new, a lot of the new cameras have got that image stabilization on. And what does the image stabilize? Is it three stops it gives you? I mean, it's, it's good. Yeah, because yeah. so, I've used the. the so the I'm sorry three, if it's less than three. The stops XH1 or more. Fujifilm yeah. with in body. So their argument but, may may well be that. But, I mean, yeah, but still, even if that it, even if that does work and it lets you shoot at one fiftieth of a second, it's not going to work every time. You're I mean, still gonna you're still gonna at some point shift just a touch yeah. before you fire. Yeah, and you're gonna get movement, but you uh, could. I mean, I mean, if it, it, I, I'd take it away from aperture priority mode, and if I was going to shoot off the hoof and not have to worry about anything, I'd put it in full automatic and yeah. let it shoot. <laughs> so like, just let it shoot another, but another, the, 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 I, I, I think the middle ground is where it gets blurry yeah. what advantage are you getting over aperture priority uh, uh, then you are either shooting manual or fully automatic because if we're saying that the two corners or the three corners of the triangle so the ISO if you're going to shoot and out, you I presume you're going to have to put it on auto ISO but with the worry that it's going to drop it below the 1 1 25th well, of will, a second it, it, yeah it just depending on the lighting through. condition yeah Depending on the light condition, if it's bright light, you're not going to have to, have to worry. So, a good example of where I think manual mode is is superior in most in, in conditions is say if you were doing wildlife photography. Say we're going to the Farne Islands to to shoot the puffins. Uh, one option would be to use shutter priority, so yeah. set to one one thousandth of a second, or probably higher, one 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 thousand two hundred fifty, whatever. Yeah. Uh, to to freeze those birds in flight, you could do that, but and it would be quite effective in shutter speed priority. Yeah. But it would still adjust the slightly rapture. now and again. So if you as you're panning round to follow that bird, you're going to get different exposures at times yeah. between diff each shot. Whereas if you are in manual, particularly if it's an overcast day, you set it and you forget it. Don't you like you get mm. get your exposure right? You set it, forget it, and you can just shoot happily all day without ever worrying about what your camera's yep. doing. I don't um, shoot birds, but Gary, I know you do. Is that what you do, Gary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, it's or, a, or manual, if yeah. it's a cloudy day with broken cloud, then it's going to be a, an issue because you've got the exposure when the sun's behind the cloud. Yeah. You've got yeah. the exposure when the sun is out, but that's still only two, isn't yeah. it? You're still only you've got that one or you've got that one. If you're comfortable adjusting it between those two things. Mm. As the as the clouds move, I mean that's how that's how I do it. I, I've got two different exposures, and I just adjust between them between usually the with my ISO. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, uh, same as you, same as all of us. I I don't have an issue with 
with any of the settings, if you're comfortable shooting aperture priority <clears throat> or, or shutter speed priority or fully automatic or P whatever, it makes a difference to me as long as you're comfortable with it. However, if you want to learn to be a better photographer and take more control, there is only one setting and that's manual. And and I, I, I could pretty much set your cameras in here as we both, as we all know, sorry. I could set your camera at F11 and tape it off, ISO 100 and tape it off, pretty much set you off or set you out into the field, and all you would do is simply adjust the shutter speed according to the light. Yeah. And it's as simple and as that. keep your camera steady on a tripod. Uh, Keeping your is. camera steady on a tripod. You see, yeah. uh, I mean, how many years' experience have you got shooting uh, and teaching photography? How many years in general? Mm, 17 years. 17 years, day in, day out. And as somebody with that level of experience and tens of thousands of hours of tuition, it makes sense. From a teaching point of view, that's what you're teaching people that are paying you money. Uh, so you're not doing it for the fun of it. If you thought that aperture priority was the best thing to do, yeah, in uh, uh, you would be teaching aperture priority, wouldn't you? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So and I mean, again, I can give you my opinion because I've always shot in manual. Yeah. I have, but when I, when I've tried to shoot in in aperture priority, I find it personally a faff. So if you're taking pictures of your kids. With your DSLR, I just stick it in automatic mode. Well, I, I I play around. I play around with different well, fully different things. Fully automatic. If I was just going around and snapping my kids, yes. I would stick it in automatic. But I don't. I, I play around with them. So uh, I, if I'm going to take pictures of my kids, that's what I use. Yeah, my iPhone. I mean, I, but, I actually find sometimes if I say if I'm using my DSLR to take pictures of the family, and then my kids want to take one of me or something. I often find that you get better results from the camera just putting it in fully automatic mm. as you do putting it into aperture priority. Just whack it in, whack it onto that green <laughs> fully it's automatic. It's easy. Hand it to the kids and they take a picture. And it looks it's great easy. a lot of the time, yeah. especially if you've got a lens on there with the big aperture. I think that's why I go for it. Well, that's why I bought a DSLR though, because I want to be playing around with that triangle all the time. Yeah. So, you know, it's like we can give people broad information about shooting with a histogram and shooting to the right and shooting to uh, whatever. But there are certain situations where I'll break those rules because I know how my camera works and I know what I want out elements out of the shot. So if I was to accuse you as a very experienced photographer of just being smarmy or clever or trying to tell people what to do, mm and shoot in manual, what, what's your response to that? My, well, I think we said it, shoot in whatever you like. But if you really want to know, uh, and, um, squeeze and wring everything out of the camera that you've spent a lot of money on, <clears throat> at least learn manual mode uh, and uh, base your decisions on shooting between manual and aperture priority on your experience rather than what somebody tells yeah, you. That's a good point, because if, if you... If you started taking pictures five years ago and you've been using aperture priority for the last few years and then you never explore shooting in manual, mm. that seems strange to me. Mm. To not fully explore what mm. your tool can do mm. from top to bottom, mm. for me, but, seems like a weird thing to do. Weird. But if you go to manual, explore that for a while. And you don't like learn, it. Don't... Learn what it does so you, you're fully aware and you're fully educated. Mm. If you then decide to go back to aperture priority because you prefer it, that's totally cool. But to never, ever learn it or explore it seems to me a very strange thing to do, just relying on the fact that people are telling you that you don't need to do manual. That doesn't to quite say that you, uh, with the, the, Because what, what, what we're not saying is we're not up ourselves by saying you must shoot in manual. We're not saying no, that. We're, not, we're, not, we're not do what no. you want. Uh, what I'm <clears> saying is, is when you've got a professional photographer of almost 20 years' experience and he's saying there's got to be something in that uh, uh, shooting in manual mode. And, um, you know, there are people that are shooting in aperture priority who are getting excellent images, but that's part of their workflow and that workflow works well for them. So it is horse for courses i've personally tried shooting for example uh, uh uh in certain areas such as woodland in aperture priority and the shots will be decent especially if i use exposure compensation yeah. i'll get a decent image but i don't like doing it that way because I, I know how because for years and years and years i've shot in manual mode but to say you're up yourself because you say shooting in manual, that's mm, it's yeah. not, it's not I mean, cricket. I, I, I'm not even saying it, or we're not even saying it, because it's, it's, it's Paul, Adam and Gary. 
Yeah. Just go to the library and, and, and pick up a book from a hundred years ago, yeah. and it's the same. <clears throat> it's the same principles. It hasn't changed. I'll play devil's advocate there because I've just said what I think. Uh, but do you not think that it, could we not get, could you not be accused of dinosaurs and the things that moved on and the fact that we've got image stabilization now? No. Aperture no, priority. No, I, I think if you, no. if you're someone like Gary does and like I do who teach photography. Mm. I think you have a certain amount of responsibility to teach the the thing that is correct. And I, accurate. I, I, that's a question because if I if I started doing workshops tomorrow, my priority would be to teach people how I do it, which would be in manual mode, yeah. and then I would go through the other uh, settings that you can shoot in if you wish. Uh, but that, so you're saying that if somebody came on a workshop with you or with you, Gary, I think you've made your point, but you would. <laughs> teach them or go no 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 in a positive way oh, yeah, yeah. uh it, 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 that's what you would do you would go through how to shoot that camera for landscape yeah, I, mean, I, I, I will encourage people to start shooting a manual there and then yeah uh, while they're stood next to me and i can help them with it um because i think it's the way you get most control over your camera and if uh, you put the time in and learn your camera and how it works and then you're making your choice based on knowledge mm. and being well, ed well educated about what you're doing mm. if you then decide to do what you want that's fine but by having that full control over your camera you can then go off and be artistic mm. do you know what I mean it's, yeah, so yeah. Th with photography there are certain objective things one of which is the technical aspects mm. so the it's objective it's factual like it's it's either yeah. it's a science yeah so, it's a science there which you can you can learn and is well documented like gary says as as to, as to um uh, professional photographers the question i'm going to ask you is what advantage do you see could possibly be derived from shooting an aperture priority then what it's, instances uh in the landscape um i mean personally field? i wouldn't ever use it in the landscape yeah. but it's, it's easier in some circumstances, but like we said, with the with the panoramas, it's probably going to be more difficult. I think so. Uh, in it, it's one more thing to think about. You yeah. can't focus stack. No, you can't focus stack either because in theory you've got to take two shots and recompose. Yeah, you know. Okay, you can really try your best to hand hold it. Oh, okay, you can. If you you say hand hold it because because I know a lot of people who shoot aperture priority shoot on the tripod. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, um, yeah, instance, yeah. yeah. Um, because you are slowing the process down. Um, Another, I mean, what another another thing I've heard about people say criticizing people that shoot in manual, saying that they're just relying on their camera, and I'm not. I'm relying on three things when I shoot manual now with digital cameras. I don't get I, that. I'm, so I'm, yeah, but they're saying you, you, you're only using the light meter to get it. What I'm using is a combination of the light meter on the cam, the built-in light meter on the camera, the histogram, and the actual appearance of the image on the back of the screen. Mm. I'm using those three things to get my exposure correct mm. perfect and and it, so i'm not relying on just one thing that the camera's doing i'm relying on those three few things plus a bit of experience but, but, to, but to it's the right. experience because you know you, you we all know the advantages and disadvantages of your light meter in the camera depending on what uh, how you use that light yeah. meter uh, uh uh so i uh um, shoot in spot mode uh, and it's got its advantages and its disadvantages, but that's how I shoot. And um, so uh, I, I know when the camera is telling me things with a histogram. I think it's how you know your camera because I uh, meet a uh, spot meter. And um, I know the foibles of spot metering compared to other modes of metering because I know my camera inside out. So I know what the histogram could be telling me or not telling me could be slightly off, but I just know through knowing the camera that that works. Yeah. Uh, and that's why uh, um, I enjoy shooting uh, um, in, in manual mode. So I've just got, I, I can tweak things the way I know how. Yeah. I, does that make sense or is that waffle? I just really want to be clear that we're not telling people what to do. We're not, that, we're not, not, we're not no, against no. people using aperture priority or shutter priority. Do whatever you want. But I think if, to me, it's just bizarre if you're taking something seriously and you're trying to get better at it to not then explore all the possibilities. That's just, and it, it's almost like that hit. I think, just, I, I, think, I think it just doesn't make sense to me. I think right? if we if we want to come across as a balanced view, though, is all three of us are saying shooting manual, and I brought it up before. Is there any advantage at all that we could say to people? Yeah, we understand why you're shooting aperture priority when you're taking a landscape image. In landscape photography, I'm struggling to see the benefits with, with portrait photography or documentary photography, street photography. Mm. 
uh, wildlife, wildlife, yeah. where you've got you're changing direction all the time. You've got diff, yeah. different exposures at every turn. Yeah. Mm. Then aperture priority is something that can be very beneficial, and it Makes is a lot, sense. lot easier. But th- it wasn't but, there wasn't uh, with the cameras the the I think that mm. those different priority or those different modes are set up for different types of shooting, other than the landscape shot where you've got time mm. to compose that image and work with that composition and work with the light. Well, look, look. Or am I wrong? It doesn't feel like you are. No, <laughs> like, no, no. no. I mean, even the thing, the handheld thing, the handheld thing is, it, uh, and again, am I wrong? Because with the image stabilization, and I know I'm going over the point, but if you're wanting to make sure that the image is not blurred, you're going to have to put it in auto ISO. So two out of the three things you're setting in the camera. And so the only other thing that, the, that, that uh, uh, is actually happening from um, um, a what's it a point of view, is clicking the shutter, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. In Aperture Priority, though, say you set it to f11. Yeah. So you're already going quite dark. Yeah. And you leave auto ISO on, then it's still going to lower your shutter speed mm. as well. It's not going to. It's not going to set a shutter speed of one two hundredth of a second in an ISO. I mean, 5, I mean the it? thing it's is, is a landscape shot, right? Uh, normally, people are shooting what f8 to f16 if they don't want diffraction. You maybe be f8 to a bit less, but um, so uh, once you, uh, the only thing that you're actually controlling with the camera is your depth of field, aren't you? Yeah. The rest of it, it's the camera that's doing it for you. Yeah, yeah. which is very nerve wracking. Mm. Yeah, that, that's kind of my point, though, isn't yeah. it? Like you, I, I want, I want to have control of that. I mean, the only way that can work is if you really know what you're doing. That's so if you depress the fire button halfway down and it's now showing, because there's a lack of light now, it's only a 20th of a second, you have to be aware of that. Ah, right, now because it's 20th of a second, how am I going to compensate? Well, we're going to have to open the aperture. Now we'll lose depth of field yeah. or we're going to have to raise our ISO. If you're, hard, if you're handheld. Yeah, That's exactly handheld. what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's even more confusing than shooting in manual. Yeah. That's a good point as well, though, because as you start to shoot in manual, and you, it forces you to start thinking about light yeah. more, doesn't it? Because I, like mm. that cloudy day I'm talking about, you know that if that cloud comes across, you're going to lose two stops. Yeah, yeah. And you just start as, and as the experience builds. This all comes. Yeah. It all just t- it's it's like driving a car. It yeah. becomes second nature. Yeah. And you just know I've got to drop two stops there. Yes, you could do that on on exposure compensation. But what what about from a beginner who's just going out and shooting? Because if you shoot, let's say, in aperture priority mode, you're shooting at f11, so you know you've got your depth of field right, and then you're in auto ISO and you uh, are shooting one stop above and one stop below, the chances are that you're going to come out with a good exposure in that image, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, on a tripod, yeah. because then you're not you're taking the shutter speed out of the equation. Yeah. Maybe it may, simplifies things and lets people dip them uh, to understand how depth of field works, and then. Uh, move on a little bit further, a little bit tra- the, the re- like training re- wheels on a bike. Yeah, the reason I encourage people with landscape photography, though, to do manual straight away is that learn everything together, and you are capable of doing that. So it, rather than separating learning the technical skills from everything else, mm. do it, just do it all together while it's fun and you're learning, mm. and you, you're on a steep learning curve anyway because it's difficult at mm. first. Let's learn bits about composition mm. and how the camera works at the same mm. time rather than completely ignoring the technical aspects and just thinking about composition, then hoping your camera sorts it out for you. Mm. Why not learn it all together? So start start learning those technical issues or getting on top of those technical issues. So as you get better at creating good compositions, your camera skills follow that up ra- as well at the same time, rather than getting five years down the line where you're taking some really nice compositions, but you're virtually still a beginner mm. with controlling the camera mm. take the two things together and you, your experience will genuinely match what you're doing and it'll be make mm. you better anyway if you do. i think your rationale makes absolute sense to me because obviously i was playing devil's advocate there but the other thing is is the beauty that we've got with from the landscape photography genre is you've got time yeah you can sit down you could sit there for an hour and a half and we mentioned about shutter counts didn't we and maybe put a uh, higher shutter count on your camera and experiment with that triangle mm. uh, and with different lighting conditions. Because the great thing is we've got that EXIF data, so you can take it back, can't you, into post-processing yeah. and see what 
what works, and then you think, well, great, at F-16, in those lighting conditions, at that shutter speed, uh, with the dynamic range of my camera, that worked well. And then goes into your data bank, doesn't it? Yeah. It's one of the other things I've heard as well is that when we're trying to play devil's advocate and give a balanced argument is that shooting aperture priority gives you more time to enjoy the landscape. Yeah, but that's kind of, that, that, does, that doesn't no, make that's, sense. I mean, that's that's one of the things I've heard someone <laughs> yeah, say. Like, yes. But I, 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 just, I don't want to worry about my camera in the field. I just want to enjoy the moment. And Well, then don't take a camera. Take your iPhone. Yeah. Well, what, that, what are we doing it for? We're, doing, we, we're going out, aren't we, at the end of the day with a camera to enjoy the art of photography. So, mm. and it, again, why not take pictures with your camera? I'm not d- disparaging that. No, no, but no, if, no. if you're going to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a DSLR that allows you to manipulate and play with light and everything else, why would you then put it and let the camera do the work? Yeah, that's for you? a good good description that play with the light because mm. that's what you're doing, isn't it? Spend yeah. most of your time. As I said, I mentioned about the histogram. We all get taught that you shoot the histogram with the digital as far to the right as you can. Sometimes I'm not doing that when I shoot. It just purely depends on what I want. And people will say, well, you shoot it to the right and then you can get everything back as much as possible in post-production. Yeah, you can. Well, but what, there are what, certain times where I'm out in the field that I want to play around a little bit. What, what I do when I run workshops, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't preach to anybody. But what I say is, look, just watch me shoot. Mm. Watch me set my camera up in manual mode. And if you feel that however you shoot, whether it's shutter Mm. speed or aperture priority, is better than what I do, then continue doing it. I don't have a problem with that. Mm. I don't preach to everybody. But I I have people all the time, you know, when you speak to them, what modes do you shoot in? Well, I shoot in aperture priority. I always have them. Well, do me a favor. Just watch me set up my camera. Okay, and then you choose, mm. and that's what I always say. That's, you choose. That's a great method of teaching, though. Mm. Yeah, and challenge, I mean, challenge them to it. It, 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 it. What? What? Again, uh, I, I mentioned it on a po- couple of podcasts ago. Is when people are telling you what you should and shouldn't be doing. That's oh, you yeah. know what I mean. And yeah. You're shooting aperture priority mode because it does this and it does that. Well, when it doesn't do that and this, and there are potential pitfalls to that, and they're not explained then that worries me because if people are watching that and thinking they're going to get uh, 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 good advice by doing that, then th- I, th- there's I, a concern. I think, it's bad, I think it's bad advice for anybody to offer any advice other than manual. When we're talking about you taking full control of your camera, then I think any other advice is bad advice. Mm. But like we said, and we're going to stress again, if you shoot an aperture priority and you know what you're doing and you're comfortable with it, keep doing it. I'm not going to. I'm not telling you you're doing it wrong. Absolutely far from it. But shooting in manual is so easy, especially at landscape photography. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? But it goes back to uh, um, uh, photography myths, doesn't it? It's like, from a beginner point of view, you have to shoot in the lowest ISO possible. That's a, for me is a landscape photography myth. Yeah. You know, if you can shoot in the lowest ISO, the lowest ISO you can possibly get to get the conditions right, to get the correct spo- exposure mm-hmm. is absolutely valid. But you don't have to be going and shooting every single image at ISO 64 or 100. No, true. It's a myth. Mm-hmm. But it's, it, you have to shoot in manual mode. That's a myth that yeah. isn't true. You yeah. don't have to. No, you don't. You can get great images no. in it, aperture yep. priority. But also, manual... Or, or aperture priority, you should shoot in aperture priority because yeah. manuals are worth the time. Yeah, that's a myth. Yeah, it's also not true. You have yeah. to shoot with a tripod. That's a myth. Yeah, you have to shoot a pano shot uh, on a tripod. That's a myth. Yeah, but what is a fact is that to have total control over your camera, you've got to shoot in manual. Yeah. It's just a truth. Otherwise, it's you, a truth. Yeah, because it's, it's a, a fact. Truth. Otherwise, you're yeah. letting your camera do stuff for yeah. you, and it. So that's that's the decision to make, isn't mm. it? Do you want to have Full manual control over your camera, mm. yes or no? Mm. If your if your answer to that is no, mm. cool. Do mm. like shooting aperture priority mode. But if if you do want to have full control, which is what I re- I recommend to people, so that you can then put that in your knowledge bank and focus on the art, mm. then you need to be in shooting in manual mode. That's when it when it when it does change a little bit though is with focus. So we're talking about being in in M mode, aren't we? Yeah. And, and controlling the the triangle manually, but then there's manual focus as well isn't there and i'm less strict with that because i think mm. the focus on these cameras these days is flawless mm. and i've i test it quite a lot i shoot mm. 
mostly in manual focus. You still have to choose what to focus on. That's that, true. That has to be right. Yeah, no, that's absolutely. True. But that's, that's the same with manual focus or automatic focus. But I, I will leave it in autofocus sometimes. The uh, We've had a discussion about focus in the past and the number of people that uh, are coming on board with that you focus to infinity for landscape shots and it gets things sharper... Uh, he's, he's, he, 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 the, the sound is Myth. becoming I mean, uh, becoming <laughs> overwhelming. Myth. Yeah. Uh, but have you tried it? Have you actually been out, Gary, and tried it with your digital uh, camera uh, and shot at infinity and seen if it was sharper all the way to the front to back compared well, no, to doing it with the traditional way? Well, no, it isn't. No. That's the it, thing it, with focusing. That I don't, that's the thing with all the talk around focusing mm. that I don't particularly understand is that just try it. Mm. Try, like, yeah, that's what I'm these saying. These images cost you nothing. Like, yeah, take one picture focusing on if you if you and if you're not comfortable with it as you're learning. Yeah, take one at infinity, mm. one at the like in the middle somewhere, mm. yeah. and then one in the foreground. If you want to learn about hyperfocal distance, do that. Mm. Yeah, isn't entirely necessary. Mm. Yeah. The thing is, is I don't want to get because it's it, we've traditionally, especially coming from a film background, would have shot uh, using the traditional views. But there are people out there that have said that they've uh, good photographers that have extensively tested uh, where to focus, and they're telling telling that they've done the tests and it's better shooting at infinity with and, and if you're shooting uh let's say f8 and you've got something in the very near foreground then focus stack that but most of the time you'll get everything a lot sharper sh uh, exposing uh focusing at infinity now i haven't got experience with it but it's something i'm going to test in the field i don't know maybe maybe some people it's just some people's desire to be contrary i don't know but different yeah. with, with 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 nikon do they not have built-in or like bracketed focus stacking now yeah, they do. The DA50 yeah, I mean, does. Do that, can you? The like, DA50 does, but you could do uh, that. But the thing is, again, uh, that's, for, for it's me, not true. The, the problem with it for me is, is that uh, when I've done it automatically, I've not quite got the results that I really wanted. Right. So it's as easy. It's easier for me because I know if I'm focus stacking, what points I'm going to shoot at yeah. in that element for that focal length, for that depth of field that I'm shooting with. So I know, right? I'm going to point here, here, and here, like you did on your woodland video, Gary. Yeah. I just know it, it's in my head. So it's easier for me to go boom click boom click boom click one of the thing one of the things i love about manual focus is the feel of it mm. and i'm not usually into this kind of thing. i'm not usually kind of i don't usually need those tactile inputs but i love the feel of manual focusing mm. i remember when i used to do some video before the all the autofocus systems worked with a ds on my old canon 5d mark ii i used to manual focus for video as i'm hand holding it mm. and it just felt really good like ch tactile. Chipping yeah, yeah it was and yeah. it's the same manual focusing lens now for a landscape it just feels really nice doesn't it but you know what that's yeah. interesting here because there's a wee contradiction there because we've talked about film and we've talked about vinyl and you're an advocate of things have moved on but yeah. you love the tactile nature Only of, of that. holding I mean, the camera I'm, i know it doesn't make sense and i'm all over, I'm all over the place there'll, there'll, there'll be people shooting with nikon d850s that will be shouting now saying <laughs> focus stacking why are you still manually focus stacking it does an absolutely amazing job I'm sure it does but yeah, it's and I think a that's a different. That's that's kind of my point, though, is that manual focusing, the the automatic mode around focusing is a different is a different thing to manual mode that controls exposure. Mm. And because I think it's where the camera does do it better than us with mm. focus, mm. it does a better job than we do, mm. particularly for portraits and stuff. Certainly quicker. It, yeah, and mm. you're flicking around. It, it, so yeah, I mean, that's, that, I, I would Absolutely. argue that with portraits that that quicker focusing is better mm. and it's more accurate i've tried manual focusing for portraits no, agreed. i'm not totally. as accurate so as it's where the, that is where the camera has progressed beyond what we can do i don't think that's the case with exposure mm. I think we can still and, and the thing with, with exposure as well is that you only need to be within within a couple of stops to get it right to then to then be able to rescue it or correct it in post mm. Definitely. You've got some leeway, haven't you? Mm. So it doesn't need to be perfect every time. Depending on the dynamic range of your camera, obviously some mm. entry-level cameras, the dynamic range is not going to be as good as, yeah. the, uh, as the more expensive kit. And maybe that's what that's aimed at, is if you shoot one shot under, one shot over in aperture priority mode, you've got a chance of coming back with yeah. something in a, uh, with a nice exposure. I think one of you mentioned last time that you know somebody that brackets every single shot I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to just to, as a bit of security so, that's a mm. yes you're using a, a relatively automatic mode of the camera with the bracketing but 
It's an effective way of doing it, isn't mm. it? If you, it's if a you're, lazy way of doing it. <laughs> it's lazy. If you're not sure about... But it's a good way if you're if you want to get into manual, and you're not a hundred percent confident. It's quite it gives you that safety blanket mm, a little yeah. bit, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I, that's what I was saying about the beginners. Is, is I think it does because you said if you're teaching them, you'll encourage them to jump in to the water, yeah. metaphorically speaking, and start playing with the camera manual. But you are giving them water wings, aren't you? Again, metaphorically yeah, speaking. I mean, is, if you bracket every shot, the water. You'll, bracketing every shot, you'll soon get sick of, won't you? Because I think you, you, don't want, you don't want all those files sitting on your computer. That, that's the key. Is that, I, I think well, that if somebody who shoots in aperture priority will, in my limited experience, will get very bored very quickly and want to carry on playing with the different dials mm -hmm to get more control over well, the I'll, camera. I'll tell you why that doesn't work. It's because you don't learn anything from getting it right. You learn from getting it mm. wrong. Yeah, that's a good point. So <laughs> if you're going to run a bracket of three stops either side, right, then at the end of the day, you'll never get it wrong. And so if you just constantly do that, you'll never learn. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really good point. It's you'll a never learn. It, it, I, I agree with Adam. And it's a, it is, it's a really good point, that. You'll never learn. It's the only, where I've learned in life is when I made mistakes. And that's the problem with society these days is sometimes you can't afford to make mistakes because you get absolutely lambasted yeah. for it. But at least with our passion of photography, when we're not shooting for a brief, how many times in the past have you gone out, made a mistake and learned from it? It's a point that's going to get become trite very quickly, but it's about embracing what our reassigning what we consider to be a failure mm -hmm. landscape photography so if you go out go for a walk enjoy the landscape take your picture you come back and you've totally mucked it up mm. is that a failure is it like, you'll have learned well, you won't do it again it. no exactly so i mean it's just learning from you it's learning from your mistakes and enjoying your time while you're out but the great... better, than, better than doing that than sitting watching tv mm. surely yeah, yeah absolutely but yeah. if you've had a total control of your camera and you've got a, a, an understanding of how you can uh, manipulate yeah. the uh, settings on the camera to get that exposure. And you get back and you understand focal length, you understand depth of field, you understand shutter speed, and you understand aperture. Well, depth of field and aperture are the same thing. And you go uh, and look at your EXIF data. You can look at those mistakes and say, well, that didn't work because of X, Y, and Z. Mm. Because you understand it. And there are you? times I think you could, you could potentially get back having shot in aperture priority mode where you, you've mucked it up mm. and then you're not sure what's gone wrong. Because you've right. got because right. the camera's done a little bit for you. Yeah. So was it me yeah. or was it the camera? Yeah, you don't know, do no. you? No, no. Yeah. And then you blame the camera. Then you think, ah, damn, I wish I did buy Canon instead of this silly Nikon. Yeah. That was a joke, by the way. It's quite... <laughs> I, one of my friends a little while ago sort of taught me something because he, he did a bit of boxing. Yeah. And it, he said that when if you're in a fight in a boxing match... It's, it's one of it's, there are not too many situations like in life where this occurs, but doing nothing is not an option. Mm. And shooting a manual is a bit like that. You've got to do something, haven't you? You've got to be proactive in taking control of your camera. Yeah. Whereas in aperture priority mode, you don't really need to do anything. You just point and shoot, <laughs> don't you? And it, so it, it it almost shooting in manual mode forces that kind of learning where there's nowhere to hide. Mm. Like you say, if you make a mistake in manual mode, that is your fault. It's nobody else. Cameron didn't do That's it because right. you took control. I like that analogy. So, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, the other yeah. thing is, is maybe, maybe it is a, a, a bit of the uh, megalomaniac in me. I like having control. I like yeah. having control of the results. Maybe we're just all, all three of us are control freaks. That that's, maybe that's it is. Another option, but it? At least, at least you, you know, Massive we, egos we, 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 we've spent money on, on the cameras. Like everybody is listening and watching what they've done. And I just want to get... Uh, squeeze everything out or oh, I can out of the camera in the conditions. But maybe that's the argument is that if you've spent a load of money on the electronics inside your camera, mm. you're then not using them. Mm. If you shoot them it's de definitely an argument for the focus stacking thing and I'm sure people will comment because I'm not using it and it does a great job otherwise it won't be on the camera. Yeah, but but I, I uh, that's a different thing to, to shooting in manual. The reason that I want a, a, a DSLR yeah. is so I can shoot in manual. Yeah. If I'm going to shoot in aperture priority, there isn't that much difference in my opinion and I'll come after the feds between shooting in aperture your priority mode and an automatic mode especially if you're manned out mm -hmm. all right um, um so i either use my iphone or stick my dslr into full auto mode or have a compact camera and shoot that way if i'm shooting landscape photography then i'm going to shoot in manual yeah. that's just the way i am but i mean am i saying something out of turn there well no but another thing that doesn't wash as well you know and this is so true 
is that people will be very quick probably to jump on this. And maybe some of the comments that people might leave is, oh, well, such and such shoots an aperture priority and he won the best landscape photographer of the year award, blah, blah, blah. Well, again, that's not a problem because that's what we're all saying. Shoot an aperture priority or any other mode you want to. But if you do that and you do it right, you still have to know and understand the, mm. the triangle. You, and in which case, if you know and understand the triangle, then why aren't you taking full advantage of it? It also, it also doesn't, it's just to follow on from that point, it doesn't define how good you are as a photographer either. No. That's no. Not, well, I'm, not you, saying, no. I'm not saying I'm a better photographer than you yeah. because I shoot in manual yeah. and you shoot in aperture priority. Yeah. Yeah. Not what I'm saying. No. That's not just... It's, there are some awesome photographers that that, that that will comment that they shoot in aperture priority, but I would be interested to, to know how many of them originally shot in manual mode and then went over to aperture priority once they knew the camera was in, inside out. So I think that's going to be a contentious one, isn't it? It potentially could, but it's like we say, I, I just... I just encourage people to, well, they won't have done because they'll have switched off, but listen to the end because that's a balanced argument that we've given. Three of us shoot in manual, but we've given the reasons why. And we're saying, if you want to shoot in aperture priority, do it. Yeah. But don't tell people you're up yourselves because you're shooting in manual and vice versa. You know, this is an odd, oddball podcast, this, because what are we talking about? We're talking about photography. Oh, yeah, we, really, we, we haven't we, digressed no, at all. Deep, 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 deep with nothing yeah. but photography. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and the, there are facts in photography and the missing photography. I mean, for example, which one's that now? That's probably mine. Uh, the, the fact we haven't got any if, cameras left. Yeah, we have. <laughs> We're running out. Facts in photography is is if you use a tripod, you're going to get sharper images, but it doesn't mean that you have to shoot it, uh, using a tripod with landscape photography. I think that's uh, from myths versus facts, isn't it? Should we end it before we... I think we're going to lose all the cameras. cameras. <laughs> I think it's only going to go, it's only two gonna go dark. <laughs> Hang on a second, no, you can't see me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep going. Yeah, <laughs> see you later. Right.